Exoskeletons are amazing machines that can help us overcome disabilities and even augment our strength. But how do you control one? How do you go from intention to movement? A simple question that leads to a rabbit hole of many ingenious ideas. Now why is this question important? The fact is that it's ultimately about practicality and safety. Powered exoskeletons, as you can imagine, have motors, typically electrical motors like these ones. And of course you want to move these motors in harmony with the user's body. You don't want the user to move an arm or a leg, only to have the motor doing a different movement with potential risk for injury. Which is why we need proper control of these machines. So how do you do it? The first, most intuitive idea is to simply follow the user's movement, literally. We can take a look at a famous example, the Guardian XO from Sarcos. This industrial exoskeleton is equipped with 125 sensors that can detect the user's movement within a millisecond. Specifically, they can detect linear or rotational forces. Forces are then transduced into electrical signals and then into commands for the motors. The user's experience is reported being pretty fluid. According to a user who tried one of these exoskeletons, if you take a step, it takes a step with you. If you swing your arm back and forth, it swings its arm back and forth in the same way, right next to yours. That seems great, but, but there is a but. Because the solution assumes that the user can move his limbs, which is unfortunately not always a guarantee, which is why we have to consider also other potential solutions. So what if we control the exoskeleton like a TV? We just push buttons and we get movement. This is a very practical solution for patients who are, for example, affected by paraplegia, who have lost control over their legs but still retain control over their arms. A famous example is the Rewalk exoskeleton. This exoskeleton is controlled via a wearable device worn on the wrist. The device has several command modes that the user can select, like standing, Okay, standing. Keep coming forward. Sitting. Good. Throw the crutches back. Good. Try to lean forward as it goes down. That's it. Or walking. Good. Good look up. For each command, the exoskeleton executes a set of specific movements. This solution works pretty well, and exoskeletons like the Rewalk are already in commerce. But what if we want a sleeker solution? What if we don't even want to press buttons? Alexa, what do you do? I can control an exoskeleton. Awesome. Huh. Yeah, you heard that right. Voice recognition could be a way to control an exoskeleton. It's in fact a very practical solution because it's very easy to implement voice commands and to use existing apps like the ones for smartphones. Once you have the recording, you can just send it, for example, via Bluetooth to the microcontroller of the exoskeleton, which can then control the motors. In 2017, we saw a potential application from Bionic Labs, an exoskeleton for rehabilitation that could work with Amazon Echo. Alexa, ask Arc to stand. Standing. Now, voice recognition seems amazing, but it's still a developing field. And even people who work on speech-to-text apps admit there is still a gap between the machine understanding and the human understanding. So how do we bridge this gap between the human intention and the machine motion? Well, we could literally do that. We could literally transform our thoughts into motion. You probably know what I'm talking about. Brain-computer interfaces. If we can get the brain signals associated with a specific action or movement and transduce them into commands for the motors, then we can make people control an exoskeleton just with the brains. Just like for voice recognition, this application is particularly interesting for patients that cannot move arms and legs. In a 2019 case study from the University of Grenoble and the research center Clinatech, they developed an exoskeleton to control all four limbs of a tetraplegic patient which was never done before. The exoskeleton was controlled with thought, with an invasive wireless brain-computer interface, specifically with 64 electrodes implanted in the motocortex of the patient. 
I have made a video about this exoskeleton specifically, so if you're interested in this kind of application, you can learn more with this link up here. There are still many challenges to face, of course, and you might wonder, do we really need to have an invasive brain-computer interface? Do we really need to get into the brain? Well, scientists are working on alternative solutions. In fact, they've been working on controlling exoskeletons with EEGs, or electroencephalography, which is a technique to scan the brain that is portable and requires no surgery. Portable in the sense that you just need this sort of cap. We can see from this 2015 example from Korea University and TU Berlin, where the user was able to control the exoskeleton just with an EEG cap. Now, EEG is not perfect. Electrodes are placed on the scalp and not within the brain, so they're more susceptible to noise and signals are harder to catch. That's why researchers have to work on very ingenious solutions. For example, this exoskeleton had a panel with blinking lights. The user could focus on these lights, thus producing in his brain a signal associated with a specific blinking frequency. This signal could be read by the EEG cap and transduced into a specific command for the exoskeleton. Now, getting commands from the brain directly seems very promising, but can we go even further? Can we actually eliminate the user from the equation? In these days, people discuss a lot about self-driving cars, but have you ever thought about a self-walking exoskeleton? Crazy, right? Not for the researchers at the University of Waterloo, who are working on Exonet, a true self-walking exoskeleton. Exonet uses a camera on the chest to detect the surrounding environment, and then makes predictions about the desired movement of the user via deep learning algorithms. In this way, according to the researchers, we can reduce the cognitive load on the user. Current exoskeletons only evaluate the current state, but Exonet could also evaluate the future state of the exoskeleton, so the path, the prediction of the future movement. See stairs, prepare for stair mode. See an obstacle, watch out for that. Exonet is still just a research platform, but it's a step, sorry for the pun, in the direction of combining the human and the machine capabilities, with exoskeletons being more than just a bunch of motors, but an actually intelligent system. So what control method did you find more interesting? Let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in these videos about exoskeletons, I invite you to check out also the other videos on my channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.